This is a video on how to remove a valve body from a 1997 Saturn SL1 TAT transmission. As you can see below, there's a list of tools. A quarter inch is too small and half inch is too large, so you want to use 3 8 drives if at all possible. If you need a valve body, all you got to do is look down below and you'll see quality transmission parts on eBay. So let's get started. First step, you're going to have to remove the battery. Fairly simple, easy process. You're going to use your 5 16 socket for that. Be careful not to put the ratchet on tighten like I just did. Works a lot better on loosen. Now to remove the battery, place it somewhere where you won't trip over it like I normally do. Next thing you want to remove the piping for the air cleaner. Real simple to do as you can see here. Now normally you need pliers where you see me prying it off, but since this vehicle is so old, it's easy to take off by hand. I'm just doing a little close up here to show you that it is disassembled. Now you want to remove the four clips holding the top of the air cleaner housing on. Just two in the back, two in the front. You just take that off and then you put it to the side. And of course you want to remove the air cleaner as well. Now we have to work on removing the air cleaner housing, the lower part of it. These are the two bolts that hold it in. These are where the 13 millimeter socket comes in handy with the uh, 6 inch extension. The other one's already loose. I don't know why, but it is. So you want to take them two bolts out and preferably put them somewhere where they're not going to fall. Next you have the two bolts on the back of the lower air cleaner housing. Those are going to be your 10 millimeter socket and your 6 inch extension. Now that you've got those out of the way, now you have to concentrate on the one on the front. For that one, you're going to actually need the two 6 inch extensions. As you can see, the bolt is highlighted here with the flashlight. And that is 10 millimeter as well. And again, I'm highlighting it so you can see it.
Now, once that bolt's out of the way, now you have to worry about getting the sensor, which is highlighted with the flashlight. You need to get that sensor out of there. That one right there, that's highlighted with the flashlight. To get that off, you have to just pinch it with two fingers and it pops off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this housing out and then I'll show you afterwards how it actually pops off so you can see how it actually works. Now this, you want to pry with a screwdriver or in this case since it's so old, you can just take it off with your fingers. You want to slide it to the left of the car and up and out, just like that. It's real simple. Now the lower part of the air cleaner should come out of there with no problem. And you want to place that to the side. I'm going to connect the connector so you see what I'm talking about. Because it's difficult to show you when it's down there and it's dark. So I'm going to zoom in on it. Now it only goes on one way, so don't force it. It goes on really easy and it comes off really easy as well. Now if you watch, while I pinch it, you'll see that it lifts up the tabs. And when it tabs lift up, you pull it off, and then it's off. It's that simple. And you want to place that to the side. Now, our battery tray. We've got one more bolt that we need to remove. That's on the driver's front wheel well. And I'm going to highlight the bolt, and this is where you're going to need your 13 millimeter socket and your two 6 inch extensions. Again, this is in the wheel well in the front on the driver's side. There's the bolt right there. long bolt, about three inches long, as you'll see when I pull it out. And that's all there is to removing the battery tray. Now you just have to lift up the battery tray and pull it out of there. It's that simple. This will expose the top of your transmission, as you can see here. Now the next thing you want to do is all those electrical wires want to be put to the side. And the reason they need to be put to the side is you're going to need to take that electrical connector and pan off. So what I use is what's called a zip strip. Now zip strips, you can get them in any automotive store. I don't know if you can get them this size. I don't know how I came across them, but I did. Battery terminals, as you can see, I'm just draping them over the master cylinder. Get them out of the way. There's your zip strip right there. And if you watch, when I pull tension on it, it's going to pull those electrical lines and the wiring harnesses out of the way so I can get to the pan, which is perfect. Now, the next thing you need to worry about is getting all the debris and everything around the pan, any grease, any rocks or anything like that that might be accumulated down in there. The best way to do that is paper towels, uh, old rags, anything that's uh, absorbent so you can brush that stuff out of there. The other thing you can do is use an air nozzle, uh, which you're going to see me use here. But after you use the air nozzle, you want to make sure that you go ahead and use paper towels or whatever and get all of that grease and all that stuff around that pan because when you pull that pan off, you don't want that stuff falling inside the transmission.
simple air nozzle attached to an airline. Hopefully you get a can of compressed gas or an air compressor with an air nozzle so you're able to do this. The reason you don't see me wiping any of this down is I've already had this apart once already and I need to replace the valve body on this again because it was defective. And that's why I'm not wiping it down. I know it's clean. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes to give you an idea. Now you're going to need your 13 millimeter socket again. Now this mounts from the body to the transmission. And all it is is like a, oh shoot, a shock absorber. It's a bushing basically is what it is. You're going to need to remove these two bolts. You see me removing one of them right here. Now be careful when you bang like I'm doing here uh, that you don't skin your knuckles or crush the pan or anything like that. Now, if you're a good, halfway decent mechanic, you will skin your knuckles. It's in that of the look. It's going to happen. The reason why we need to take this out of here is if we don't, we can't slide the pan uh, or the valve body forward and up if we don't take this out of here. So it's basically it's in the way. It has to come out. We don't have a choice. It's only two bolts. They should come out rather easy. Now you want to put that mount and the two bolts somewhere where they won't fall and hopefully you won't hit them and knock them back into the engine compartment which I will do later as you will see. Now we got two more bolts that that attached to. I'm going to highlight them with the light so you can see them. I know you can't see them that well. That's why I'm zooming in with the camera. There's your two bolts right there. Those are the ones that you need to be getting out of there. Because that's a bracket that holds that. And that's going to be in the way as well. That's also 13 millimeter. I'm highlighting them as you can see here. 